Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to do a solo playthrough of Bottom of the Ninth, designed by Daryl Lauder and Mike Mullins, uh, published by Dice Hate Me Games, which is hilarious because there's dice in it. <laughs> um, this is a game that you can play one or two player. Uh, the solo game is quite fun, although you'll only ever do hitting. That's the only thing that I'm bummed about. I never get to do pitching when I play this solo, but that's okay. Um, Ricky Royal has a playthrough of this. I suggest watching that one too. He does the starter one. I'm going to do a different one just so you can see how a different um, solo setup works because there's, there's, I think, six different games that you can do from a solo perspective, so I'm just going to pick a different one. This might just be one video, or it might be two, depending on if I have to go to a second inning or not. So, hope you guys are excited. Let's jump in. Oh, before we do that, just so you know, I'm recording this before I leave um, for my trip. And so, if you're watching this shortly after it came out, and you mentioned something and I don't respond for a while, sorry, I'm, I'm out of town. But when I come back, I'll make sure to respond and put up any notes that, that need to be put up. So, thanks for watching. Let's, let's get going. First thing you want to do in a solo game is pull out these three types of cards. One are effect cards, one are your scenario specific cards, and then one is your starter card, which has the home opener, which is one that Ricky did. Uh, but on the back, it gives you some basic logic for the AI, and we'll walk through that as, we do it, as we're doing the playthrough. I'm going to pick the lights out closer for our scenario. And what it says here is, First pitcher has plus one control to strike pitches and always gets three relief during cleanup. Once again, that all makes sense as we're doing the playthrough. You may pinch hit once each inning. That's also important. In the 10th inning, the away team, we're always the home team, so the away team changes pitchers and scores one run. And then depending upon how we do, if we win or we lose, or not win or lose, if we lose, we get no points. But if we win and we're doing the campaign, we, if we win in the ninth, we get seven MP points. And if we win in the 10th, we get five MP points. Okay. But so I'm going to grab this lights out and then we get to draw one effect card. So we'll just randomly shuffle these up. Let's snag this one. So this says, oh, this is the same one that uh, Ricky used. Pitchers may reroll pitch type dice once on a B5 or B6. And then if we wanted to play on an advanced effect, we would have this here as well. But we're just going to play a regular game. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move these three cards off to the side. And then these cards are going to be used for the AI to determine what type of pitches they're going to throw. So if they're going to throw a low or inside pitch or maybe a, a high and away pitch. And so we'll draw from this deck. So I got to mess these up. I'll mess these up off camera because I got to mess them up a bit. And we'll be drawing from this deck to determine what type of pitches the pitchers are going to be throwing. Next thing you want to do is set up the pitcher deck and your lineup. Now, the normal game you play with six players, but that just seems silly to me being I am a baseball fan and you always have nine in baseball, okay? But when you play with nine, you have to pretend that you're in the National League and you have to have a pitcher. So we have our pitcher Tempest here that's going to be batting ninth for us. And, you know, that's really not a problem because we can always pinch hit for him anyways because, remember, we can pinch hit once each inning. The big thing here, though, is you've got to make sure that you have one from each of the different spaces. So Captain Cosmic here is our second baseman. Then we've got Hockey here, who is from our first base. So we have to have one of each. We have a couple people in our group that's going to say utility. That means they can do one of any of the positions. So um, that'll work, too. For the pitchers, I just grabbed all the pitchers that we that I have. I do have a couple expansions. Uh, as you can see, this team is mostly going to be the Sentinels of the Multiverse team because I just think it's kind of fun because <laughs> I know the I, I know that game. And what I did here is I just randomly shuffled up the uh, pitchers deck, and so then we just draw that top pitcher and we look to see what his abilities are. Each pitcher is going to have these three different types of abilities. These two are always going to be the same. The top one, if ever he gets the red token, so we guess high or low incorrectly, he can get a plus one or minus one to his control die. And his control die is just this numbered die. Okay. Then the white one, if ever he gets the white one right or we get the white one wrong when we're guessing what he's going to pitch, he can reroll his pitch die. His pitch die has balls strikes and corners okay then if he pitches his ace pitch which is low and away he can get a knuckleball a b5 or a b6 becomes a corner six 
and then he does have a trait. So if no foul or no contact versus strike two pitches, the home team may try to advance all runners one base with plus one speed. <laughs> so we can try and steal from him. That's kind of nice. Something I 100% forgot to show you, we start with nobody on base and no outs, and we're in the bottom of the ninth. So we'll start in the ninth. If we don't score any in the ninth, they're going to score one in the tenth, so then we're going to be down one nothing in the tenth, and we're trying to win the game, so we'd have to score two runs in the tenth inning, which is going to be hard. So it, it's, I have only won this twice out of, I think, five plays, so we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's play ball. So here we have Captain Cosmic right here at home base. We're having um, Wake Louder here at pitching against us. And so what we're going to do is each round, we get to decide, okay, what do we think he's going to pitch to us? Are we gonna, is he going to pitch a low and inside pitch? Or maybe is he going to pitch a low and an away pitch? And which, if we guess correctly, whichever ones we guess correctly, we get to use and potentially get our benefits here. So for the red ones, we get a plus one or minus one to swing dice. If it's a white one, we get to re-roll our, um, our swing die one time. And then if we get our red and our white, we can choose any two, which includes our MVP. And our MVP for Captain Cosmic is, if Captain Cosmic should take a third strike, mark it as a foul instead and may not crush the card. And he has a trait that uh, Captain Cosmic gets automatically gets the red ability, so his plus one or minus ones to swings, versus low strikes and low corner pitches. I know it sounds crazy, kind of like a lot, but you'll see how it works. We start off with the stare down phase. That's where we get to decide how we want to place our chips. And what we're going to guess, Mr. Wake here, I'll bring him down so you guys can see him a little bit. Mr. Wake Louder is going to pitch to us. And I'm thinking, let's start with, he's probably going to throw his ace. That's my guess. So I'm going to guess low and away. Then what we do is we draw the top card here and we look and it says pitcher selects ace pitch. Oh, perfect. So since he picked that, we guessed both right. So that means we have both of these at our disposal. So now he'll roll the pitch die and the control die once. Now he gets a B3. What we first want to do is check to see if his dialed in card makes any difference for him. And it doesn't because he didn't roll a B5 or B6. Then we would look to see here if we want to do any of this logic, and we can't because all of the logic here that he has, he needs to have either a red or the um, white token. He doesn't have either one. No worries. So we have a B3 here. Now, how do we make sure that we succeed against a B3? So I'm going to show you this really important card. This is one of the most important cards to understand in this game. And I think we're just going to go through a couple examples. So I got to remember that I rolled this B3, okay? But let's, let's just go through all of these. So first, here's a strike. So we've assumed that we have rolled a strike on this die. If I've rolled strike three for the... Um, for the away team, and then we roll our swing die, and let's say we roll a two. If we roll a two, we don't have enough power, and we're in this area. We're below the control die. Our swing die is below the control die. It's a strike. If we had rolled a three, that three is at the same level as the strike here. Um, so it's, they're tied. That means it's a foul. That F means a foul. And in baseball, fouls are considered strikes. But if that would be your third strike, you don't strike out. You continue going. So that's why that's different than down here. Now, if I rolled a four or higher, so let's say a five, I'd be up here in the C. That means contact. And then we can go to the running phase, which I'll show you that in the playthrough. All right, now let's go to B3. So let's assume that the pitcher rolled a B3. Now, if I rolled on my swing die a B1, or not a B1, a 1, we'd be down below here, and that means we have a ball. That means we did not, we basically checked our swing, and so we didn't swing at it, so we got a ball. Awesome. Now, if we rolled a 3, so they were the same, it's also a ball. So we can roll a 1 through a 3, and it's going to be a ball. But if we rolled a 4 or above, so let's say a 5, we get a strike because essentially we just we thought it was a uh, we thought it was a strike and it wasn't. We swung through it, we missed it, so it's a miss. Okay, and that's a strike, and you can strike out that way. Now the third one. Let's say we had corner three. 
These are the hardest ones. They get them right at the edge of the plate. We can only make contact if we roll a three. If we roll anything else, a six, a one, anything else, it's a strike. So the corners are the hardest. So that's how this card works. There's one other part down here about crush it. What that means is if we roll a natural six, we don't adjust it by our using our abilities, we roll a natural six to hit the ball, we actually crush that ball. And then we roll a second die, and depending on what we roll, if we roll another six, it's a home run. If we do um, roll a five, it's a double. If we roll a four or a three, it's a single. And if we roll a one or a two, it's just like we have to do our normal run. We crush the ball, but they're able to at least field it, and so we still have to do the run um, phase. Whew, that's a lot, but understanding this card is the key to understanding how to play this game. Going back to our first roll, we rolled a B3 for the pitcher, for Wake. So now what we're going to try and do is roll a three or less on this die. As long as we do that, we have one ball. Now just to make sure everybody's on the same page, how balls and strikes work is you can have up to three balls and you're still going to be up at, up at the plate. But if you get a fourth ball, that means you get to walk to first base. You don't have to run. You automatically get a free base. Conversely, if you get three strikes, you're out. You're automatically out. You don't even get to run to first base. And so that's why balls are good for us as hitters. Strikes are bad for us as hitters. And then it's, convert, it's the opposite for the pitchers. But okay, let's roll our swing die. So we got a three. Perfect. We needed to be a three or less. So not bad. We have a ball. So now that was our first pitch. Now we get to decide, okay, what is, so he threw our a, his ace at us last time. I'm going to guess low and inside. So then we draw the top card here and we have low and inside. <laughs> yes. So we guessed it right a second time. So then we Roll the dice up, and he rolled, oh gosh, he rolled a strike five. Now, because of the scenario that we're playing, this scenario says that um, pitchers get a plus one control to strike pitches, and I always get three relief. So this strike five actually becomes a strike six, and that means it's impossible for us to get a hit here. No matter what we roll, we're not going to get a hit, because even if we get a six, a six is equal to the S6, and that's a foul ball. So let's just see what we get. Oh, we got a one. That's all right. That's a strike. So it's one and one. One ball and one strike. Okay, we've guessed what he's going to pitch the last two times. It hasn't really helped us because, yeah, I mean, we we could have gotten a reroll. The reroll wouldn't have mattered. Adding plus one to the swing. Like I said, you can't go above a six. You can't go below a one. So, oops, we don't have outs yet. Um, let's see. I think he's gonna try his. I think he's gonna try um, his ace pitch again. So let's do low and away, and he does high and away. So that means he gets the low and we get the away. So now he'll roll his two dice. Oh, he gets corner two. So now what happens is because he rolled the red one or he got the red chip here, he can increase or decrease this control die by one. So let's look at the AI logic quick. So we look down here and we see what they say about control. If possible, reroll and modify control pitches to obtain C6 or C1. So we have a C2, right? And we can decrease control by one. So we're going to go to a C1. That means the only way we're going to not have a strike here is if we roll a one. Oh, this wake is pulling out all the stops. Okay, we're looking for a one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's a two. Uh, okay, so we have a white chip. We get to re-roll our swing die once. Come on. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, our trait doesn't help us. I was hoping, but it has to be a low. This one was high in a way. If this had been low, we would have gotten that red ability and we would have actually made contact. But unfortunately, no, we can't use our trait. It, it was a high and away pitch. Or, yeah, high and away. Oh, we got a five. Okay, so that was a fail. That's strike two. So one ball and two strikes. Okay, what is he going to pitch to us? What is he going to pitch to us? Oh, I'm going to say inside and low. I'm guessing inside and low. Um, bo uh, batter predicts both incorrectly. Wonderful. That's great on a one and two pitch. So he gets both of these. That means he's pitching a high, 
uh, an away pitch. So we don't even get our trait because our trait's about being low. <laughs> Bummer. All right, he'll roll his dice. He's got a strike six. So an S6, he could potentially change that if he wanted, but the AI that's on this card says that if available, pitchers always activate their ace tra and trait abilities unless S6, C6, or C1. Well, he got an S6. Because remember, the, the best thing we can do with a C6 is follow it off. So we have to roll a 6 right here. That's the only way Captain Cosmic doesn't strike out. <laughs> Come on. Ah, it's a 3. So Captain Cosmic is out. So we'll grab him, and we'll put him down at the bottom. Poor guy. I mean, that was, that was rough. <laughs> now we go to the cleanup phase. How the cleanup phase works is the pitcher who just struck out the first batter in the top of the ninth looks to see the empty bases on the board. He's got three empty bases, so we would grab three cards and shuffle them back in to the deck. Now, that's what we would normally do. But if you remember from our Lights Out Closer card here, it says here um, the reliever always gets three relief during the cleanup. So no matter what, he'll get three. But in normally, you will always want to look to see how many empty bases there are. But this guy, he's always going to get three. So we've shuffled that up. Now we grab Haka. Okay. You guys know Haka. He's the big guy. So his MVP is he has the Moari Crush. At um, a B3-5 pitches are treated as strike pitches, and he gets a plus one to crush, which is awesome. But his trade is he gets a minus one speed, so he's slow. It's hard for him to get on base, so it's going to be interesting to see. But if he can crush the ball, we don't have to worry about running. So that's what I'm, I'm hoping he can crush it. Okay, so he's going to start off, <clears throat> let's see, low and away. We're going to guess he's going to start right off with his ace pitch. Let's see. Ah, pitcher selects ace pitch. <laughs> yes, I've gotten, I've gotten pretty good at that. All right, so let's see. Let's not roll an S6. What do you guys say? A corner six. <laughs> okay. <gasps> wow. So that means Haka has to get a six to get a con to get contact. No, but if he gets a six, he crushes the ball. Ooh. Come on. A two? No, that's... He could add plus two, so he has a little bit of a different ability here. He has a plus one or plus two to swing for the red one, but that's only going to get him to a four. So he is, instead of using the red and or, yeah red and white ability here, he's just going to use the white ability to re-roll. Looking for at least a four or higher, but if he could roll a six and crush it, that would be so nice. No, he rolls a two. That's wonderful. Two, I could add another two. That's just going to be a four. That's strike one. <laughs> Man, you know, you would think with guessing <laughs> both of them. Ah, uh, oh, well, okay. Let's guess uh, high and away. High and away. Pitcher selects ace pitch. Okay, so that means he grabs, he was right with away, but wrong with high. So his ace pitch is low and away. Come on. Ah, strike three. So he could use the red to do plus one or minus one to control. So let's look at his AI sheet quick. So we have an S3 here, but don't forget, they get to add plus one in this first inning. So he's already an S4, okay? Because he's an S4, he's going to use this plus one to control because he's already at an S4 through six plus one to make this a five. So that means Haka, in order to hit, is going to have to hit, have to roll a six. Otherwise, he's going to have another strike. Ouch. I have really high hopes for Haka. He's got two rolls he can use because he's got this away, and he can roll a six and two, right? Come on, six, six, six. Oh, that is a six, and that's a crush. So he crushed that. He gets to roll a second time. Now, what happens is, this dude, now, this Haka hit that ball, and he hit it well. So he's going to move himself here on, on the bases. He's running to first base. Let's see what we roll here. Come on, be high. Oh, it's a two. Dang it. If you look here, a single with no worrying about running was a three or four, a double was a five, and a home run was a six. Oh, wait. He has a plus one to crush. So what that means is 
he gets to add plus one to his die roll of two. So his die roll is actually a three. That means he got a single, and we don't have to worry about running. So he gets on to first base. Way to go, Haka. So Haka will move himself right up here to first base. And Wake normally would just only get two relief, but because of the scenario that we're doing, he gets all three of these as relief. They go back into the deck. We reshuffle them up, whoops, like so. And then we grab Tachyon. Okay, Tachyon is a great runner. Can you guess? I mean, if you've played um, Sentinels of the Multiverse, it makes total sense. <laughs> First of all, plus one, minus one to swing, easy. Reroll to swing. And then her MVP is speed is an additional plus one. And her trait is just speed plus one. So it's very likely if she can just get a hit that she will get on base. So... That's all we need is a hit. So we're going to guess low and away because, come on, that's his ace pitch. Let's see. Pitcher selects ace pitch. Yeah. <gasps> awesome. Okay. We need some luck here. Okay, so this is a strike three. We're going to move that to a strike four because of the, um, the scenario. And so she just has to roll a five or a six, but she can... Um, get some abilities here. So first thing, let's roll our swing die. And it would be nice if I actually rolled it in the... Oh, it's a five! Awesome! Okay, so that's automatically a hit. I don't even have to affect anything here. We're just going to... We're above the four, so we have a hit. And we have to do running. So first thing that happens is... I should have placed her here. She's going this way, and Haka's going... <laughs> trying to move over here. <laughs> now let's do running. Running is quite simple. We're going to roll both of these dice. This is the fielding die, and this is our running die. If either one gets a five or a six, that's the one that succeeds. So let's say they rolled a five, and we didn't roll a five or a six, we're out. But if we roll a five and they didn't, then we're safe. Ties always go to the runner. Um, and don't forget, Tachyon has plus one for speed and because she guessed both of the um, the low and the away, she also gets her extra boost. Speed is an additional plus one. So a three will even work for us. <laughs> so let's see what we get. We'll roll them. Oh, perfect. We rolled a five. They rolled a two. That means that she is safe and so is Haka. Somehow Haka made it. We'll move both of them up one base. And now we've got men on first and second with only one out. I like it. So now Wake is going to get one relief. There's only one card in the discard pile anyhow. We'll shuffle those back up like so. And we'll grab another hitter. And now we have Geis. Geis is kind of cool. Okay? He's got the regular plus one, minus one for the red. Reroll swing for the white. Red and white, he gets his MVP or any two of those abilities. And he's got the I do that way better. Geist uses the star of the on-deck batter. Well, our on-deck batter is Whitney Worldwise. And her on-deck ability is, or her ability is not falling for it. A swing result higher than a C pitch, so a corner pitch, is a ball. <laughs> cool. Okay. So let's see. What do we think he's going to pitch us? Oh, come on. He's going to pitch his ace pitch, right? Low and away. Let's see. He pitches low and away. My goodness. I love it. Okay. Oh, it's always great when you can guess it. Let's see. He rolls and he gets a strike three, which is going to be a strike four. So we just need to roll a five or a six. And we've got well, at least a re-roll. So let's see. Okay, we rolled a three. We can get any two of our abilities. We're going to use our red ability twice. That can give us plus one swing two times. So that's going to go to a four, and then it's going to go to a five. And guess what? That's a hit. So we'll move each one of our runners. Let's see if Haka gets out, right? <laughs> We're going to roll these two dice, hoping that we can get men of bases loaded. Come on, Haka, be safe. Okay, 4-2. He's still running. I haven't seen... Okay, a 1-1. One, one. Still nothing. Come on. A 5! Yes! 5-1. Haka slides into third. They call him safe. He probably was out, but he was safe. That's great. So I think with this 
poor Haka is going to be really tired, <laughs> but that's awesome. So Geis is on base, and you know who's up? We've got Whitney Worldwise up. And now Legacy here is on deck, and he has a trait that when on deck, the batter gets plus one swing versus strikes. So we just have to keep that um, keep that in our mind when we're, uh, when we're hitting for Whitney because she's feeling it with Legacy. Don't forget, though, still three relief. So we'll grab that one card that we just drew, shuffle it back up in here like so. There we go. Whitney has a really good eye because her trait is that swing results lower than a C pitch, a corner pitch is a ball. And if she gets her MVP, anything that's higher than a control pitch is a ball as well. So she is really good at holding off at pitches. So <laughs> I think it's not even a question. We're going to guess low and away, okay, because that's probably what he's going to do. He's going to do low and away. I mean, I'm not – this is this is hilarious. I, wow. Okay, let's grab our dice. Let's see. What is he going to pitch? Okay, he's going to pitch a strike two. Now that becomes a strike three. And so that means all she has to do is get a four or higher, and she hits this. And she gets a three. But she has this. That can add plus one. That is a four. Gosh, I can't believe this is happening. And now she has a base hit. Let's see if Haka can get home, and we can win the game in the bottom of the ninth. Haka's racing home. They're throwing it in from the out. out. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. I couldn't even finish what I was saying. It's a six and a six. Tie goes to the runner. So you know what that means? Haka just scored. And the crowd goes wild as Haka slides safely into home. Woohoo! Whitney with the walk-off hit. Everybody goes and cheers for her and picks her up and throws Gatorade on her. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. And you know what's cool? She was one of the few only non-Sentinels of the Multiverse hitters, and she was the one who got on. Okay, that was really, really quick. That was a fast game. Normally, they don't go that fast, but you know, I, I will say it. There's a lot of luck with these dice. I, how many times did I roll S, right? I mean, there are three ball sides on this die and only two S's, but I kept rolling S's, so interesting. Um, but yeah, that is bottom of the ninth. I think I might at some point do another one so you guys can kind of see a little bit more because that was kind of quick, but hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. I love baseball, so it's just it's just a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day. Oh, 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 I was just going to say, this is a great two-player game. A lot of fun two-player game. More fun, I think, even than the solo. The solo for me is just great because I love baseball, so I can just do it any time. But the two-player is a lot of fun because you use this whole fatigue mechanic with the, with the two-player, and that's a lot more interesting, I think, um, than, than what I was doing. <laughs> uh, you know... I, I was guessing these pretty well, too. I don't, you know, sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't. So, all right, anyways, thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.